Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is October 9th, 2020, and it's movie club nights. Let's talk about Forbidden Planet, Tombstone, The Black Breakfast Club, and El Topo. Okay, those were the four movies that we chose to watch in a previous movie club video where we did the choosing of the videos and uh, or movies so we've had about over a month now to enough time to watch the movies and uh, in our own leisurely time some people watch them faster than others and uh, we're going to talk about them today and in a couple of days we're going to do another movie club uh, live stream and we're going to pick the movies okay now, while we wait for notifications to go out and uh, whatnot, let me tell you what this is all about. I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. If you want to know what this work is about, you can follow the work on Patreon. I don't put anything beyond paywalls. Everything's Creative Commons. Share and share alike. Elder God, how are you doing? You can follow the work, and after following the work, seeing the type of content that we're sharing, if you think this work is worth supporting patreon is a fantastic way to do so and for those of you who are supporting this work through patreon thank you very much for your support it is in large part because of your support that we are here and able to do this we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in these live streams as they are happening when you see the chat pop up twitch is where you want to be at and for those of you who've been supporting this work through twitch subscribing following commenting and coming to the live streams thank you very much for your support i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on lo minds vk gap parlor and twitter you can follow the work there we do share additional content and for unscheduled live streams uh, i announced the live streams uh, a couple of minutes a few minutes before we go live notifications both sent awesome thanks elder god we will be i better turn on the recorder <laughs> i tend to forget to do this <laughs> and for those of you who are listening to this live stream after the fact in audio format graham thank you very much for the tier one sub appreciate it brother ahoy ahoy and for those of you who are listening to the audio of this live stream discussion in podcast format we do upload these files to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho and these audio files should be available on your favorite podcasting platform and uh, for those of you who are listening to the audio version of this it is october 9th 2020 and we're doing a movie club live stream we're going to talk about four movies we're going to talk about el topo okay we're going to talk about the breakfast club we're going to talk about tombstone and we're going to talk about forbidden planet now forbidden planet classic sci-fi from 1956 i believe tombstone classic western from 1993 i believe breakfast club classic uh, what do we call this um a classic from 1985 an el topo uh classic from 1970 and we will be uploading this video to both bitchute and youtube and for those of you who are supporting this work through bitchute and youtube thank you very much for your support thank you for subscribing thank you for sharing thank you for liking thank you for turning on notifications commenting and for those of you who are on youtube thank you for joining youtube membership Aside from that, gang, welcome to another live stream. Starsky, yo, Chicho, I'm glad I made it this time. Awesome, Starsky, glad to have you. I like your shirt, Chicho. Thanks, Graham. I've had this shirt for a long, long time. Coming on to, coming on to, from the 
I've had this shirt from the early 1990s, I guess. <laughs> it's been around. It's been around. Made it. Diet Doug, how are you doing? I've missed every live stream this week. School has been rough. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine, Elder God. I'm going to take these things down, gang. And boop. Hey, we don't want to take brows down. We want to take YouTube down and bitch you down. Yeah, I can imagine Elder God. I can I can imagine. Salute to the teachers out there. Okay, who are trying their best to make sure no generation is left behind. Let's put it that way. And they get a better education than previous generations. The same combo as last night, gang. I got lemon liqueur going on okay and and <laughs> we still got meringue pie going on and we got meringue pie going on right we still got meringue pie going on let me hold this so it doesn't slide away take a look more meringue pie and it's fantastic uh, it's taken us about three days to go through uh, a pie right crumble oh. I'm gonna topple it over so it's easier to cut okay very nice I hope you guys got amazing amazing eats going on I'm gonna make it last crack how are you doing that was cheeky i wish i had some right now <laughs> Darcy. i planned ahead every now and then i go off on one of these crack had my cbd dose for the night big glass of water so set to go awesome awesome and i got some tea going on as well diet thug you got steak pizza yo that's nice you know american cuisine haha <laughs> i think maybe i've eaten steak pizza once in my life if even that it's 4 a.m so so too early for breakfast too early for breakfast no drinking oh well you might be uh, seeing the night off elder god right salute salute to the uh to the night owls gang did you guys all watch the movies i shaved my head and most of my beard today oh my god Graham, it's winter coming on you should be keeping the facial hair stay warm stay warm what gang which movies should we watch or should we watch should we talk about no alcohol this evening okay awesome elder god management management is a great way to go management management which one should we talk about gang should we wow well, we'll wait a couple more minutes for people to roll in okay it's a slow night maybe tonight forbidden planet a very young leslie nielsen yeah for sure and forbidden planet was uh it was a good movie it surprised me i've seen it before there was one part that was cringeworthy but the rest of it sci-fi was very good i'm having some weird reaction from this weed i'm uh, tired but i can't sleep hmm I feel like alcohol would fix it possibly possibly in moderation of course starsky right <laughs> the soundtrack for forbidden planet is so good you know what the soundtrack for um these movies all of them were fantastic uh the breakfast club was very you know nostalgic and stuff like this uh, el topo was crazy soundtrack I didn't get uh, get to for oh you didn't get to Forbidden Planet I like I watched Breakfast Club uh, like a few hours ago I held off held off held off I wasn't sure you know I knew I was gonna watch it and I just you know I had certain memories of it and sometimes when you rewatch something that you liked initially when you saw it or second time you saw it or third time you saw it that you haven't watched for many years 
you're not 100 sure if it's uh, if it's still good, right? If it stood the test of time, and uh, Breakfast Club, wow, some heavy moments for some very oof, intense moments and some crazy slapstick funny. Let's go chronologically, maybe from time. Sure, let's go. El Topo is great music-wise for sure, for sure. Crack. I watched it three hours ago. Which one, uh, El Topo, or no, Forbidden Planet, Elder God, for sure. I watched Breakfast Club three hours ago. Wait, I did watch it. I just forgot about it. <laughs> you forgot one of the pinnacle science fiction movies of all time. No. So we go chronologically. Forbidden Planet would be it. Should we go with Forbidden Planet? Oh, Breakfast Club. Elder God, you watched it around the same time I did. <laughs> Yo, Chicho, have you seen uh, Genghis Khan, 1965? That's a classic. Is that um, uh, Kirk, uh, Kurt Russell as well? Genghis Khan, who is that? That's the Hollywood Genghis Khan, right? I'm pretty sure I've seen it, but I haven't seen it for a long, long time. Long time. If you're here Monday, make a recommendation, Starsky. I wouldn't mind watching it again. John Wayne, is it? Oh, John Wayne, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe he's got the crazy, really thin mustache going on, right? Yellow face, yeah, yeah. I don't watch John Wayne movies anymore, man. I watched some John Wayne movies when I was younger, and they gave me a little bit cringeworthy, uh, like moments. Very, and then I learned about John Wayne's actual real life history, and I can't watch John Wayne again no john wayne john pl playing genghis khan that's a very strange movie yeah yeah i remember seeing it i remember seeing it uh it was interesting at the time i was young but i never rewatched it <laughs> john wayne crack <Craig> says <laughs> hilarious i got a feeling we might not be watching any john wayne movies in this movie club i really can't remember any john wayne movie there's one john wayne movie it's crazy man he's like a cowboy uh, and uh on the mexican border and they ride their horses into a mexican land and uh they're by the river and the mexicans come over and they say hey gringo you know what are you doing this is our land and it goes i don't see your land or anything like that they end up killing all the mexicans oh i told you this was my this wasn't your land <laughs> it's like what the f <laughs> the weekend has started let's go young folks gang should we go chrono chronological the oldest movie first should we go oldest movie first let's do let's do forbidden planet john wayne was a racist on screen racist on screen and coward off screen sure done deal 1965 was omar sharif as Genghis. is it omar sharif as Genghis khan oh i don't remember that i remember the john wayne one for some reason but i remember omar sharif Genghis khan was John Wayne the earlier one? Are you talking about Lawrence of Arabia? Lawrence of Arabia is a brilliant movie. I gotta look into that. I gotta look into that. Gang, Forbidden Planet, 1956, I believe. Let me give you the uh, stats on this thing. 1956, right? Director, Fred M. Wilcox. Okay. Writers, uh, Cyril Hume, Irving Block, okay, the two that, uh, based on a story by, by who? Based on a story by who? Based on a story by Alan Adler. William Shakespeare play credited, really? William Shakespeare, what is that all about? Stars, Walter Pigeon, Anne Francis, Leslie Nielsen those are the three top ones right uh, so classic classic one of the classic science fiction movies of all time right louis and bebe baron doing the amazing early electronic music for uh, for this movie forbidden planet yeah the soundtrack it's inspired by Shakespeare the Tempest. Is it inspired by Shakespeare the Shakespeare Tempest? Wow, wow, wow. I didn't know that. 
I didn't look into the the history of this thing. Uh, da, 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 da. The music. Oh, this doesn't have the soundtrack. Um, I would have to go to Wiki to see the soundtrack on this thing. John Wayne was 1950s. So, uh, what do you call it? Omar Sharif played in 1965 Genghis Khan. I need to watch that. Smug Wasp, how are you doing? Spoiler for those who didn't watch. Spoiler for those who didn't watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gang, if you haven't watched these movies, you don't want spoilers. Uh, don't watch. Uh, don't be here on the live stream and definitely don't watch this after the fact. But wasn't the alien thing the manifestation of the hatred of others? He, it wasn't hatred of others it was manifestation of uh, okay we're going we're giving huge spoilers of course we're going to give it of the scientist the top scientist from the scientists yeah hatred for others maybe right so it was a manifestation of the scientist because he had plugged into the instruments that technology and the technology has had created this entity that uh, attacked anything that challenged his uh, life his existence elder god so do i crack the music was so groundbreaking in the world of modular synth synthesizers there's still a patch called the krell patch where the synth basically plays itself really is that how they did the music for that crack i wasn't i didn't know too much about the music the only it was is a brilliant movie as far as i was concerned right it's amazing i've seen it i don't know this would have been at least the third or fourth time i've seen it cheryl how are you doing right oh yes i've tuned in just in time awesome lark bark the music is entirely done using modular synth really not synthesizers but early electronics magnetic tape done with magnetic tape unbelievable i had no idea that just kicks it up huge huge i found fb very star trek in style yeah there was a huge element of that elder god so i guess we would say star trek was taking a fair bit of uh, creative license from forbidden planet forbidden planet what a movie what a movie what a movie the only part that really didn't stand the test of time is the relationship the between the male uh, when they first saw the daughter right when the uh, this what do you call it the earthlings that uh, the people who were traveling the astronauts when they went on to the grounds and the way they it was very 1950s i guess uh, movies in that realm where the interaction between male and female was very uh, cringeworthy now I think lost in space too seems inspired by forbidden planet yeah forbidden planet I think is superior to lost in space uh, in my opinion but I haven't seen lost in space for a long time so I would have to watch lost in space again uh, for sure what well, lost in space came after forbidden planet yeah for sure it must have been because the way you wrote it yes i th i think i saw bones on that ship and was waiting for spock the whole time yeah bones was there 100 percent. there was no spock though there was no spock kirk was there the captain was very kirk was very reminiscent of that right there was no i guess spock would have been the robot the robot would have been spock elder god could we say that if in that case it was totally star trek totally star trek salute gang or Mo mobius robbie the robot was a kind of a sci-fi staple before this movie okay where did Robbie the Robot originate from? That was Lost in Space, right? Cheryl or Mor Mobius. I don't 
don't know the reference. I know Mobius, but I can't place it uh, with Forbidden Planet. They used the Greek mythology as well, which gave the end away for me. Really? They used Greek mythology in the end. Uh, that gave the end away. Cheers. As for me, I'm having a Perrier. Awesome. Perrier and uh, meringue pie would go well together too. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna have another meringue pie for Monday. Asimov story, 1940. Also, the Fantastic Island, 1935. I don't think I've seen uh, uh, Fantastic Island, 1935. I haven't seen. And Asimov, I've seen some of his movies, especially some of the older ones as well. But I didn't. Uh, the the stories he wrote. Uh, story from 1940. Which one would have been Graham? What's the story from 1940? Mobius from 1940. Is that Asimov? Strawberry Rhino. Hey hey hey! Smoke green crack every day. <laughs> oh, that looks delicious. Yeah, Lark. I love by Me too. Chicho is a short story called Robbie. Is it? I haven't read it. I haven't read uh, that Asimov story. I've read some of the other short stories. Uh, and I haven't read any Asimov novels, so um, I should. I don't know why. Never seen either of those, Graham. Yeah, I, I, Asimov must be the story. I don't know. What, what was the earliest Asimov movie that they, uh, or story that they turned into a movie adaptation? Adding to list, adding to list, crack. Nice, Mobius. Sorry, he was a uh, he was so critical that I could see Spock. Oh, okay, Mobius connection. Oh, okay, okay, I follow you. I follow you. Okay, Cheryl. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Right, for sure. Spock was there. Elder God, I Robot, uh, is his most famous one oh the i robot you're talking about yeah yeah we did uh we did a reading of uh weird science fantasy it it was the second part of i robot but i robot is asimov i didn't realize i robot was asimov the original one that i showed you guys in the amazing uh, uh astonishing stories the pulp magazine that's uh asimov writing i robot man i gotta remember this stuff wow 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 now nah, i really gotta read it I've, I've i the reason i knew that one i could find was because uh i had pulled it out to read it to do a live stream reading of it what's up chicho i bring death how are you doing sorry like the will smith film yeah that was a brute uh, well i guess it was b it was okay movie but nothing like what it could have been uh yeah will smith uh yeah, the only one of the best Will Smith movies was the one where it was a superhero, a drunken superhero. That was good. That was good. But Forbidden Planet Gang, what a fantastic movie. Um, it would have been absolutely groundbreaking uh, during the time, 1956. Absolutely groundbreaking, right? Spot of tea, how are you doing, Spider Man? Whoa, new film. Uh, film location. Yeah. This is where we do the comic book readings. We're gonna do comic book reading here, just looking this way. I actually set it up by the library, uh, where we have the books. But the people downstairs start. They're throwing a party, so they're playing. Oh, oh, lots of music. So I was like, oh man, I gotta change locations. Since we're talking about sci-fi films, I highly recommend checking out Hardcore Henry, uh, an upgrade. Hardcore Henry just recently came out, Lark, right? Looks different. Now, yeah, the lighting, I guess. Hancock is that movie. Yeah, Hancock. Hancock was a good movie, yeah, Spider-Man? I bring that almost midnight here. Uh, was just about to go to bed. Glad I caught the stream. Awesome. I bring you death. Movie talk. Why not? The effects were awesome for 1950s. Phenomenal for 1950s. Like, really... 
absolutely brilliant and the <laughs> the contraband the guy getting what uh, what do you call it his bourbon or whatever it was he was getting and setting up the electric fencing around it was interesting uh, Cheryl has anyone brought up the forbidden planet tempest uh, parallels uh, I, someone mentioned that that was uh, it was based on them it was Graham I've actually I don't know the I don't know which story the pen tempest refers to I would have to uh, be given a refresher uh, spot and I raided you but it didn't show up as a raid oh no <laughs> thanks for the raid gang <laughs> Uh, I thought I was good uh, it was good but the reaction of them seeing the girl reminded of high school boys yeah and that to me threw me off that to me was uh, that was the only part that really didn't stand the test of time right it was like little 13 spoiled boys it was very weird right but it was 1950s and if you were able to somehow modify that that you wouldn't you wouldn't by the way but if that was filmed now everything with that movie would be identical except that interaction between the astronauts and the daughter yeah hardcore hernia and upgrade are great films okay recommend them to us uh, lark in our discord recommend them to us in our discord i like it a lot spider-man yeah me too upgrade looks cool upgrade that's the one uh i saw that one that's the one yeah the upgrade i've seen that's the one where the guy um uh, uh, should i give spoilers i'm gonna give spoilers gang if you don't want to listen to this don't listen to this that's the one where the ai takes over control of the creator and fools uh, hires out the uh, what do you call it the assassin right and he plays a trick out of her that was a really good movie actually the robot suite was one of the most expensive props of his time really the robot suit was one of the most expensive props of his time excellent excellent for a sci-fi movie of 19th excellent excellent yes the father and daughter connection okay the father and daughter collection grab making the glass dome for the head would have been extremely time consuming and difficult okay okay never thought about that oh tempest from shakespeare yeah yeah who mentioned that oh yeah when i read the description cheryl i said shakespeare it didn't make sense to me and then graham i think mentioned that it was uh, based on tempest from shakespeare strawberry rhino total recall is amazing in my opinion shout out three boop alien lady and i can't i swear i've seen the play tempest and i've like uh during a shakespeare festival but i can't remember the story arc on it i bring death have you ever seen life of pi yeah one of my favorite life of pi i think so maybe gang if you got movie recommendations recommend them on monday we're doing a movie recommendation um, video right lark park oh absolutely total recall going on 30 years very relevant very relevant their interaction cracked me up so quirky so cool kooky hooky yeah the what do you call it the daughter and the astronauts it was like what is going on i personally couldn't wait until that interaction moved on to the sci-fi aspect of things such a peaceful background <laughs> emily how are you doing elder god i love the background tonight and the relaxing rain yeah you can hear, hear the rain yeah yeah it's nice it's gonna be raining for the next few days looking forward to it actually graham i wouldn't make the movie recommendation stream can i have a write-in vote uh what do you uh, put it up for us on discord but what's your what's your vote you can't if no one recommends it graham we can't put it in for you you have to be there i think that's a rule that we put in so however if you, which movie is it that you want someone else might recommend it so they'll they'll use their vote to recommend your movie 
Yeah, that's right. Nice. My dinner with Andre. You recommended that last time. <laughs> it didn't go far. I voted for it during one of the rounds. My dinner with Andre. I did. Yeah, you did. I voted for it once, but it, it didn't go up too high. Okay, my dinner with Andre. We'll see if someone remembers to recommend it. Emily, I'm doing well. Just trying to sleep, but snoring man next to me. <laughs> so I'm here. <laughs> Roll them over. Hold their nose. It's a Spider-Man repeat. Haha. <laughs> All God says. Any movie rec recommendation? We're doing a movie recommendations on Monday. We're doing a movie recommendations on Monday. Should we go to the next movie, gang? We're about 30 minutes in. Next movie is 1970s El Topo. Any final words anyone has to say about Forbidden Planet? Aside from, for sure, check out the soundtrack, gang. Supposedly, from what we've been told, it's revolutionary. Revolutionary, right? So I actually wouldn't mind uh, listening to the soundtrack just by itself, just to see where it goes right <laughs> El Topo he's got the vomit going on <laughs> check it out for sure okay Craig thank you for the uh, for the info by the way gang let's take down Forbidden Planet Doink. for anyone who hasn't uh, who hasn't seen Forbidden Planet check it out Lark Bark 100% for anyone who hasn't seen Forbidden Planet check it out if if not for anything else other than the historical significance of that movie a really really important movie for his time gang el topo 1970 one of the classic psychedelic psychedelic movies right directed by alejandro Jodowski. Uh, okay i'm sorry for the pronunciation horrendous horrendous okay and he was the main actor in it as well so he was starring in it as well okay uh and i i'm just checking this out and his son was his brother a topo son and el topo means the mole in spanish okay so it it was it it needs to be experienced in my opinion okay it needs to be experienced crack el topo is just such a legendary flick when i finally saw it it in uh, it all those years ago i liked it but it didn't blow me away uh, holy mountain fando and Liss, those two blew my mind yeah holy mountain brilliant uh, i haven't uh, seen fando and Liss. Uh, I need to see those, but Holy Mountain, wow, wow, wow. Uh, I think El Topo was more digestible <laughs> for the first exposure to, 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 to uh, uh, Jorowski, I can't pronounce his name, I'm the director of this movie. Uh, but Holy Mountain, what a what a insane psychedelic journey that is. Elder God's favorite movie, Cheryl says. Its first DVD release wasn't until 19, uh, 2007. Serious? 2007? Thank God for the Pirate Bay. Right? Elder God, I have, uh, I have to come clean. I couldn't find El Topo except in Spanish with no subtitles. So I had to just watch a review to fill in the gaps. Oh, are you serious, Elder God? Oh, it's... Uh, but you don't speak Spanish right you speak multiple languages but i don't think spanish is one of them it that there's a deep meaning there there's a whole story arc of uh the the boy becoming a man and it's all looped together and it's just uh, there's there's supposed to be lots of deep meaning behind it and stuff like this and i think you can just take anything from it uh it is literally uh, a pure artistic movie in both the uh what do you call it bad and the good right some people would say oh it's an art film uh and it is an art film but it is a brutal art film um 
and for the budget the budget they must have had for this must have been like nothing nothing there's a comic out now son of el topo yeah written by Dorowski. haven't read it yet but i like to give it a shot yeah i saw it i almost ordered it but i haven't ordered it yet uh, after watching el topo again i think i might order it i think i might try to get my hands on it elder god not spanish i saw a lot of religious connections huge and man if you want to go religious with uh, the director of this you got to go to holy mountain but huge religious overtones and that's related to the i believe he's spanish right he must be spanish i think i was mistaken last time of what nationality he was but oh he's chilean sorry chilean right so south america like crazy influence uh, by catholic catholicism right so it's insane down there the south american culture and uh religion and the programming down there so there is tremendous amount lots of religion all through his movies yeah yeah holy mountain is insane like <laughs> like really i haven't seen holy mountain for a long time i actually wouldn't mind watching it again um uh, personally and elder god it, if it comes up in our streams that is part of our movie is must watch you have to watch it have you seen tusk that is a lot no i haven't seen tusk yet i've seen parts of it i've never seen the whole thing and i heard it's absolutely amazing as well even the spanking with the cactus but i was uh, too busy <laughs> laughing <laughs> the the sexual overtone in this thing was insane as well right the religious aspect of it the sexual overtone of it the uh, the breaking of taboos and, and whatnot the the lack of dialogue even right the imagery um the the captain in the bed and stretching and getting jazzed up it, it was very well done very well done i i rewatched holy mountain last year again and it was incredible crack i bet i bet agree chicho breaking of taboos is a big one breaking of taboos is a big one he did like that's one of the things especially in 1970s just imagine going to the movie theater to watch that right there was certain groundbreaking movies that came out during a flood of garbage that was coming out in the theaters during those times right uh, el topo would have been one especially coming from south america the edits were so rough indeed cheryl <laughs> i kept thinking there must be a reason for keeping it that way other than the add to the feeling of confusion i think it was they were staying within budget i think it was just budget constraints i think it was just budget constraints elder god suicide by castration was a bit nasty <laughs> you mean uh execution by castro oh suicide yeah uh punishment castration suicide castrated like and the whole uh the male female interaction and the and the conflict it's just groundbreaking really groundbreaking crack how long did it take uh, for them to shoot it i think it was pretty much an art collective of them that made it i might be wrong though that's the feel i got from it like the set was the desert um the most expensive thing would have been breaking the most dangerous i guess would would have been tumbling the old building and i'm pretty sure they didn't get any license or anything just found an old building that they broke apart little shed thing elder god bean sex was so hilarious bean sex bean sex oh i can't remember now with the bean sex the the monks with the soldiers the the chaos soldiers grabbing the boy monks and like the the link up with and take this into consideration this was in the 1970s right and the the message of young boys and religion and abuse and it was 
like if you put it into the time period it was wow well he's been a silhouette on the ground Emily okay so I want to watch this now but at the same time I'm scared because of what elder God said uh, Emily it it is it's underground it's underground that has become to be recognized as one of the most important movies for its time right and after the fact as well right uh, so it's very unique go into it with uh, the feeling that you're about to enter uh, just go through a psychedelic journey right that that would be my take um, for me I have I don't know this would have been probably the fourth time I've seen it and I just watched it uh, two nights ago and uh, I was just chilling with it right I have experienced this movie uh, from the realm of entheogens uh, with uh, psilocybin fungi okay a heroic almost a heroic dose in El Topo and from the realm of the chemicals uh, with LSD <laughs> pretty serious and El Topo and with not influenced or whatever it is brilliant on all fronts okay uh, if you can handle your heart going on a journey uh, the realm of entheogens and El Topo will take you to some scary places okay everything was better in the 70s art wise so adventurous so adventurous right um, the they really broke taboos and they did it uh, without with they weren't seeking uh, material wealth they were they were they wanted to rattle the cages right which I think we're starting to see right now happening in our societies where people are telling big money to go F itself they're gonna make a statement and they're gonna make it flat right in your face as hard as they can right I love the dark night dark night rises moment uh, all from the when they went into the <laughs> I think the one you're talking about when they went into the the cave is that the one or which moment there was a few of them it's a man with a very singular vision doing what he wants to do it's incredible with that in mind you are really getting into another human being's brain yeah in far as far as the director goes he had a vision something he wanted to create and he did it he directed it he wrote it he starred in it he brought in his brother to star in it as well right so he wanted to get it done and he got it done I would I you know what I haven't looked to see what the budget on this was I wonder if uh, you know what I wonder sometimes wiki has the budget a budget of 1 million in 1970 okay so I you know take anything from Wikipedia with a grain of salt uh, it says the country of origin was Mexico language was Spanish so the director was Chilean born in Chile but uh, he shot it in Mexico right okay he shot it in Mexico he's Chilean French the, the director actually so he did it with a budget of 1 million dollars which is pretty damn cheap uh, I think anyway 1970s if you consider what some of the movies Hollywood was putting out how much they cost they must have cost right I will keep that in mind hmm. it's weird but not as graphic as modern films y yeah not as it's uh, it yeah it's very uh, cartoonish in terms of graphic goes right but in terms of acting goes it's very impactful right so the the special effects 
or childish at best right like compared to now it's like someone in high school making the special effects but the impact the emotion put into the acting and the, and the dialogue and the plays and it it was very intense very intense it was his son in it with him oh his son in it with him not his brother okay his son in it with him the ending was a little too close to fact for me though haha <laughs> haha yes the cave climb uh climb yeah <laughs> indeed <laughs> oh my god the dark night moment uh emily i'm not good with graphic films to be honest and i appreciate that cheryl i'm not good with yeah this doesn't you don't see huge gore or anything the only gore part you see is when they're going through the town where there's a massacre and the massacre is not it's people lying around with blood right the only gore you see is horses that with entrails and stuff and i'm hoping that was just i don't know it was 1970 or i shot in mexico so who knows what it was i was born on an important chilean date and i have a chili animal as a pet i should visit chile oh <laughs> god you should visit chile <laughs> fun as far as the soundtrack goes gang uh what who made the soundtrack do you guys know the soundtrack on this uh, da, 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 da. it looks like uh i'm just uh at least attempting to make a sequel to el topo a nice teaser poster but apparently no shooting was actually done the original working this the son of el topo was changed sometime between to abel, abel kane i don't know what abel kane is stalled film okay so the son of el topo would be the continuation of el topo right don cherry i think for soundtrack don cherry i don't know have you watched the imitation game chicho imitation game which highly recommended miro imitation game i don't remember i know the name but i haven't seen it and he also helped in putting the soundtrack together very cool sorry i was busy with my google translate <laughs> jazz musician he played with uh, ornette coleman and others really so that soundtrack would be uh, I I know it stood out, but I it, it wasn't as trippy psychedelic as Forbidden Planet. He had very Eastern influence on his music. Now I gotta check out the soundtrack for El Topo. El Topo. Nina Cherry is his daughter. Nina Cherry. I don't know Nina Cherry. Now I gotta look this up. oh very cool oh i know this she does some amazing hip-hop right i think she does some amazing hip-hop i've heard some of her tracks some of her videos i saw they're very political and uh i believe Mira, I enjoyed a pop singer from 1990s. Singer 1990s. Seven seconds. 1990s, okay. I don't know her music too well, uh, to be honest, Chicho. Okay, crack. I've seen her, um, but I can't place it. I can't place it. I gotta get back into soundtracks. Some amazing soundtrack. By the way, one of the greatest soundtracks ever is The Mission. Uh, phenomenal soundtrack and uh, uh what do you call it uh, the passion of christ buffalo stands you know Marci marciano on the mission mm -hmm. so good so good i used to 
listen to that album so much or tape I guess amazing soundtrack you know Marciano um, Mar Mor Morricone I think uh, Mor Morrisoni I can't read you know uh, he, he did some amazing soundtracks and I think the mission would have been one of his greatest one anyway one of his greatest any final words regarding El Topo gang any final words regarding El Topo while I munch away on my lemon meringue pie yo Chicho vocalist how are you doing welcome welcome we've covered a couple of movies so far and you know what big bites of lemon meringue pie elder god one thing about el topo i think some of the acting was real the acting was fantastic really i think um not all not all of them but the key players they did a it was very passionate to me it was more a, like a play watching a play elder god you still hate it as much as you did before this discussion he claims that one scene in particular was real but that might have been a little bit of a lie on his part to court controversy which scene was that crack i'm getting sleepy and i may fall asleep soon emily says so calming awesome i hope you have fantastic dreams emily you're eating cake again i am eating cake again <laughs> when i buy the lemon meringue pie it's like this big so we have it for like three four five days it doesn't last more than five days it was so much better than i thought it would be cheryl says i may venture into holy mountain we'll see okay cheryl i'm actually thinking about recommending holy mountain on the next one uh so <laughs> elder god i mean real real ah uh, real real okay okay according to crack uh, well according to the director son there was one seal that was real real i hesitate to say which scene chicho have a read of wiki okay can you let us know on discord <laughs> that way i don't have to go through a whole wiki page <laughs> i had your reign about 10 hours ago ah elder god i'm going to recommend it as well chicho awesome mondays you said monday crack <laughs> i'll vote it up so let's fill the fill the recommendation with uh, Dostoevsky's movies. <laughs> Get Elder God, Elder God. You're gonna have no choice. You're gonna have to watch uh, Tusk, uh, uh, Holy Mountain, and some of the other ones as well. <laughs> we are right on schedule. Awesome, awesome. Gang, should we go on to the next movie? The next movie. The next movie let's take el topo down the mole let's take the mole down and bring on the breakfast club breakfast club i'll give you my opinion i was hesitant to watch the breakfast club again right because i seen it a long time ago i wasn't sure if it was going to stand the test of time i had good memories of the breakfast club and i didn't want that ruined because sometimes i've watched older movies that i really like and then i watch them i go oh man that was not good at all right breakfast club it was seriously heavy at certain times seriously oh my god over the top at a certain times but what really made me appreciate breakfast club was the humor in it oh my god there were parts in there where i was laughing my ass off especially the the geeky kid and uh the dandruff girl question which one was you at school to all <laughs> I was all of them <laughs> like i didn't do the clue i didn't do the click thing i like the 90s vibe of this movie yeah it was 1980s 1985 1980s feel and the director the director did ferris bueller's day off and he did some of the other classic movies it's i've actually believe i've seen all the movies the director 
directed his name is uh john hughes okay and here's the movies that john hughes has directed right according to imdb anyway he's written a whole bunch but directed only eight movies 16 candles which i've seen breakfast club weird science seen it ferris bueller's day off planes trains and automobiles hilarious movie she's having a baby seen it uncle buck hilarious movie curly sue not so good those are the only eight movies that he's directed okay john hughes i'm not sure if you guys have seen his movies but i i liked it i liked it thank you for whoever recommended it i would have never watched it again if people hadn't recommended it crack it is so good how many times have i watched that in my life i have no idea such a great movie about these outsiders yeah and insiders right elder god allison brian andrew claire john nice elder god emily yeah i honestly get that too i enjoy different movies as a teen just some just do not feel the same anymore yeah some don't diet thug oh man i missed the el topo discussion oh diet thug you missed it you can drop in whatever you want right now but it was it was good discussion uh cheryl i love how much it's changed for me from first watch as a teenager 20s 30s and now now love it you love it you did you love it every time 16 candles was funnier 16 candles i thought was fantastic too oh it's 999 nice elder god i have seen them all have you seen them all too nice we got soft hearts right hollywood fish the tray show was smoking tonight hope you check it out i totally forgot about it hollywood fish out <laughs> check it out oh i totally forgot about it yeah dang it dang it should have set up a reminder oz 999 what about crazy crazy movies a crazy movies uh, tombstone was pretty crazy the next movie we're going to talk about uh, was pretty crazy el topo was crazy el topo was insane diet thug if el topo was written today 80 percent of the script would be written in emojis <laughs> awesome and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be distributed it wouldn't have been funded it would have been shelved it would have been shelved if hollywood was involved in it right like just consider uh holy mountain was made in the early 1970s right and then you had passion of christ and people were freaking the f out with passion of christ and then you have holy mountain <laughs> like take it to another level will you <laughs> and holy mountain came how many decades couple of decades before passion of christ right okay in my opinion uh breakfast club was about peer pressure the family dynamics and how to escape it through group thinking possibly i thought the 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 thief guy what was his name john andrew Al, brian no not brian andrew john john i think the the kid with the with issues i think he was a real dick and he and he did a pretty good job being a real a-hole right what a you just didn't like that kid cheryl loved it every time cheryl says but tune into different aspects and connections as my life perspective changed i think the viewer's self per perception is a huge alt character in this movie yeah you know what i for me the, the i found the bender elder god says it was uh, make in 1970 oz uh el topo yeah el topo 1970 right absolutely cheryl crack says yeah well said <laughs> the what do you call it uh, one of the things about this movie was uh the portrayal of the teacher and the and the custodian uh the janitor the wise wizard uh that's been around the one who hung around too long uh lost his way looking at these kids as enemies instead of 
kids, right? Uh, it was a good movie. It was a good movie. The sexual overtone in this was over the top. Holy cow! Whoa, whoa! It was intense, right? There was a few. There was a few parts where I was like, "Oof!" Right? Like the this movie made now, it wouldn't be made. There'd be uh, politically correct people that would probably boycott this movie right horny teenagers crack yeah these kids turned me turned on me these kids turned on me <laughs> under the table is under the table incident and when he came out and he was leaning over uh molly uh, the red-headed girl and the way that interaction when he was telling her what she would do in a sexual it was like oh my god that's like that's on the that's abuse verbal abuse right like i can't see that even being and this was this was mainstream hollywood movie there's no way mainstream hollywood movie would ever put out anything like that right now i can't see it a teen movie on that level i i haven't seen any teen movies on the, you know that's come out i don't think so in the last 10 years or 15 years 20 years 15 years this was the first watch where i emphasized with the principal it was an odd feeling cheryl says <laughs> he was a dick he was he was such a clown he was just there for the money of it right but yeah you sympathize with them you did i got to watch this one again crack you haven't seen it yeah is worth it man the funny like i'll give you one spoiler one of the things that cracked me up where the black haired girl was telling her story and stuff like this about going to see a therapist and stuff like this and molly the red-headed girl goes oh you did that oh you did that what are you crazy and the geeky kid goes she's oh i can't give you the punchline of course she's crazy like <laughs> close the door let's get the prom queen impregnate i know oh my god 2020 that's planned like it was crazy like really it was like i was watching it i was like i don't remember having this feeling of um, discomfort in previous viewings and i haven't seen this for at least 20 years now right it was like a serious discomfort feeling and then they would throw humor in there and you would start laughing and then the discomfort a scene another discomfort the, the uncomfortable scene would come in and then letting loose scenes so it took you all over the place i found it interesting i found it very well done more more so than i thought nice rain and threatening a pupil in the a cupboard you lock them in insane right now the kid would just yell something and the teacher would be fired put on sus suspension how the tables have turned right like now the teachers are afraid of the kids back then the kids were afraid of the teachers the rain is going to knock me out said cheryl sweet dreams a drink sounds good right about now diet thug indeed salute salute very fun very fun and by the way gang all the directors for all these movies except el topo two of them died in their 50s one of them died in their 60s and the el topo director is still alive like john hughes died when it was like 56 or something the director of this movie uh, i believe so anyway he died when he was 59 he died when he was 59 which is fairly young 
so I found that weird as well. We picked mostly directors, three quarters directors that are dead. Fun. It was a very pleasant surprise. Uh, Breakfast Club. Pleasant surprise. Lemon meringue pie and rain. And there was a lot of um, there was a lot of slang used today in the movie, which meant other things in 1985. Yeah, some I can't say here. Yeah, there were some some things that, like really, there was a few discomforting moments uh, in Breakfast Club, and a few phenomenal moments when they're puff puff, and they're sitting around talking the geeky kid and the bad kid and the red-headed girl and they're talking and the geeky kid was so funny so funny when he puts up a hand to give a to give a high five the guy goes boom and he falls over the slapstick aspect of it was awesome i always love the song playing in the end in breakfast club yeah the soundtrack was great by the way the soundtrack was great i'm almost thinking of old buy down Neo Maxi Zoom Dweeby. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Cheryl. Suicide by Flare Gun. Difficult plan. <laughs> Difficult plan. <laughs> and he was so emotional about it. They found the gun and everyone was like freaking out. And the scene just before that with Emilio Este Esteban. Char Charlie Sheen's younger son when he was telling his story man that was pretty intense that was pretty intense that was beautifully done by the way that was beautifully done it it, it had a certain amount of depth tapping buns together yeah taping buns together yeah and the way he said that just seeing the father of the other kid that has to see their son go through this and he turned around and said how can you apologize for that you can't like and and that character would have had to carry that right when 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 right and uh, to tell you the truth i've known people like that right that um yeah it was crazy son of a Son of a bitch. Elder gun. So, uh, thumbs up, gang. So far, which, by the way, so far, which movie was... Uh, well, we'll talk about it afterwards. I, I want to find out which movie surprised you the most. The Eddie G. I always liked Bender describing Christmas at his house. Smoke up, Johnny. Another banner, banner year in the Bender house grabbing his collar right grabbing his collar good movie very good movie for me uh, breakfast club surprised me most because I wasn't expecting that much from it since I hadn't seen it for a long time and the other movies I remembered well and enjoyed them very much enjoyed them very much gang should we go to the fourth movie the last movie i want to have a little bit of water i'm glad the people downstairs were partying so i moved over here it's really nice here we've got the skylight you got the rain hitting we hear it better elder god i watched it over 200 times <laughs> the we'd seen that scene no diet thug let's do it and i always find something new with tombstone are we going with tombstone or breakfast club elder god which one oh no mandalorian tombstone 
Breakfast Club, yeah. I haven't seen it 200 times. I've seen it. This would have been probably my fifth time or something. Tombstone. What a fantastic movie. What a fantastic tribute to spaghetti westerns. What a fantastic movie, really. And Val Kilmer, what an amazing job. Without him, this movie wouldn't been would have been mediocre at best. With him, fantastic. And Kurt Russell relationship to me, that relationship was gold. It was everything. Tombstone is my dad's favorite movie. He loves Kurt Russell as Wyatt Earp in it. Yeah, the Eddie G, fantastic. Can we watch a movie on on there? On where? We don't watch these movies together. Crack. I've only seen Tombstone once and can't remember much of anything from it. Crack, watch it again. Okay. I I seen this is probably my third time watching Tombstone, third or fourth time watching Tombstone. It did not disappoint. Okay. Val Kilmer and Kurt Russell's relationship made was everything in this. Okay. 1993. Uh, I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. What a badass. The old, like, you know, when people say who's someone, you know, name some of the the biggest badasses in movies i'm surprised uh val kilmer's character doc holiday doesn't come up in tombstone one of the greatest badasses ever in movie history i'm your huckleberry <laughs> regarding val kilmer 100 percent agree 100 percent. you're so drunk you're seeing double see well i got two guns here for you one for each each of each of you is so good so good energy so good energy and man one of the greatest scenes ever when they're uh going by the way spoilers of course when when they're going with wider they're tracking down these people and stuff like this and uh there's four of them and wider have just pulled a miracle out of his ass right and one of the and they're resting and one of these people turns to uh, Kurt, uh val kilmer and says why are you here uh, he goes he's my friend and one of the other guys says i got a lot of friends and then val kilmer says i don't right i love the interaction in latin and the cup pistol moment latin and the cup pistol oh yeah that's right in the bar where the guy does his the gangster does his tricks with his gun everyone's like on oh, val kilmer brings out his cup phenomenal you were at the edge of your seat going oh, what is he gonna do what's gonna happen like it, you knew he wasn't gonna walk away and then he does the cup you've called down the thunder well now you've got it diet thug elder god that was a great scene phenomenal scene and gang if you don't know what we're talking about you're missing out one of the greatest scenes in movie history really and the sets were amazing and uh, the the shooting was amazing the, 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 just the, the the sense of the movie was phenomenal phenomenal have you seen anything like that i haven't haven't even heard about anything like that <laughs> that was when they were going in the river with kurt russell just going crazy have you ever seen anything like that i've never heard of anything like that <laughs> phenomenal really good it was a spaghetti western with a uh, and by the way the director is italian or was italian i believe he died when he was like 56 years old um who's the director i got a uh, greg p cosmatos and kevin jar okay written by kevin jar great p uh cosmatos he died when he was 64 sorry 64 and i'm not sure if kevin jar is still alive kevin jar kevin jar kevin kevin jar died when he was 56 
uh, Jer, Kevin Jer, died when he was 56. And he was an American director. Ah, oh, that's why I had the American feel. And, uh, and, uh, George P. Uh, Cosmatos was Tuscany, Italy. So it was a collaboration between Italian and American. Uh, so that's interesting. Tombstone was was good as entertainment, but historically accurate. It isn't. No, I don't expect anything from Hollywood to be historically accurate. Spiritual answers. Like Wyatt Earp wasn't a nice guy, right? From what I understand, he wasn't a nice guy. And the OK Corral, the way it went down, uh, it was a massacre. Uh, and this was a massacre as well, I believe, right? But I don't think anybody was uh was sad about killing anybody else but we weren't there right elder god i love the hidden uh gay yeah could have been relationship between two characters very rare in the 1990s yeah he was a fairly self-serving guy as were his brothers yeah yeah they weren't nice guys and doc holiday was a straight out from what i understand murderer so and he, he was portrayed that way here. He was a straight out murderer. But they showed him as someone who was little lubby dubby and stuff like this, like cuddly to a certain degree. And he only killed people that deserved killing. But from what I know of history, Doc Holliday was just a ruthless murderer, right? Allergot, many of the characters were in the wrong places during the OK Corral battle. Yeah. <laughs> Doc was a dangerous man. Doc was a dangerous man from everything that I, in the past, I looked into it. Doc Holiday, but Val Kilmer, it was it's lore basically. I think it's Hollywood style, based on a true story, and that's the only thing that is true from that story that they're bringing in the characters, the bad guys or the good guys, and the good guys or the bad guys, and the situation is totally flipped around and whatnot so it's interesting salute salute spiritual answer i think i read of doc that he was likely the most prolific killer of the group at the corral okay i think that's what they portrayed in tombstone as well didn't they i think doc holiday took out most of them one of them just went da, 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 da. and it was pretty brutal how long it took them to die which which was actually from what i understand very accurate of the time right like during the, those times they didn't really have exploding bullets and whatnot and calibers were different like when you got shot you could still continue unless you got shot like in the spine took you out and whatnot so i think that aspect of it was great where you know it took a few bullets to take people down and one thing i know of western from what i looked in the history a long time ago is you rarely ever had equal you know mano a mano they stand and they kill each other usually it was someone shooting someone else in the back or the side or surprising them elder god quote does that mean we can't be friends anymore? If I thought we were, we weren't friends. I don't think I could take it. Kills his friend. <laughs> fun dark holiday, dark holiday. Great movie. It was a fun movie. And by the way, gang, great selection. Like we had totally different movies in large part, right? Uh, very well done uh, so by the way gang okay question which movie were you disappointed with and which movie surprised you the most that you really were glad you saw it really nice varied selection for sure yeah spiritual answers a lot of those lawmen in the west were former and present criminals herb left law enforcement to form a posse who hunted his enemies down and murdered them yeah and they try to portray this as 
a val valiant thing that they were doing in Tombstone where they were hunting down uh, what do you call it the really bad guys but you know it's Hollywood right I love the actress who played Wyatt's wife very good acting very good acting very good acting and the girl that Wyatt fell for she was she made it big in a in uh, the TV series that came out mash that was uh, sort of a mash thing that was a remake of the original mash I don't know if they called it mash it was like a doctor on the front lines of war I forget what it was called spiritual answers the break the black breakfast club looking back on it is disappointingly silly not even as good as my teen self remembered Lafa. okay spiritual answers for me I found it better China Beach Cheryl yeah did you used to watch China Beach Cheryl I used to watch China Beach I liked it it was fun yeah thumbs up thumbs up I'm a huge mash person by the way gang there's some amazing TV series that came out in the 1970s which are absolutely brilliant uh, Barney uh, not Barney the Barney but uh, the police station one is fantastic uh, all in the family is fantastic mash is fantastic my family fleed uh, Barney Miller yeah Barney Miller my family freed a southern state after a shootout gone bad it was not deemed fair and a bounty was placed on the family members by crooked sheriffs welcome to policing it really hasn't changed much okay it really hasn't changed much Barney Miller was phenomenal I man Barney Miller I think I need to take a Bill Hicks break and watch marathon Barney Miller I love the reference to the Cowboys being the earliest form of organized crime yeah yeah, yeah. that was pretty cool actually and man they were ruthless they were brutal damn my folks watch Barney Miller all the time they loved it as well yeah crack when I was a kid I used to watch it awesome 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 fish was the best character fish was awesome they did a full-on tribute when he passed uh, because the the series he, he passed during the I think second season of the series or something like this fish was awesome he you know what he was like he was like uh, 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 Winnie the Pooh the donkey Igor he was all depressed and oh, oh this. He, he was like Winnie the Pooh's uh, Igor I think it's called Igor I forget the character's name the donkey that's all depressing and stuff I was mostly surprised by Tombstone I remember watching it Eeyore Eeyore thank you Cheryl uh, so Cheryl says I was mostly surprised by Tombstone I remember watching it within a few years of its release and not being impressed but the humor and relationships are excellent yeah the relationships were phenomenal really and Wyatt Earp and the girl uh, the actress the relationship there was pretty good too and as Elder God says Wyatt Earp and his wife just broken relationship or yes spiritual answers strawberry rhino organized crime had to be in China and Japan much before the Western world also the Sioux were a savage gang tribe that would ravage the land of many other natives uh, yeah there's pretty brutal tribes around but um, I think the British Empire was pretty much one of the most brutal empires there ever was so and they were a gang like the the royal family is a gang like the royals are a gang right so I don't know if organized crime originally from China and Japan I'm pretty sure organized crime has been around since humanity has been around right I'm pretty sure there was organized crime during the Greek period right ha Eeyore these are there's a guy we work with that's the nickname we have i gave him your oh no he was he was good at the godfather he was good in the godfather mr hyde 
He was great in the Godfather. Elder God, I love the use of red uh, sashes to identify the members of the cowboys and the last cowboys dropping his uh, sashes to save him from being killed. Yeah. And then he, he got killed later on. They announced, they said he got killed later on or something, right? Cheryl, I wish they would have either stepped some of the female characters back or develop them further i know they weren't the focus but they only hinted at their importance yeah yeah i agree cheryl i wonder if there's any major scenes that they were left on the cutting room floor right because uh tombstone was two and a half hours long or something wasn't it and it's weird some movies uh the movie industry has gone through periods where there was a period where most movies were making an hour and a half that way they could show them on tv to make it two hours and put it cut it, cut it with commercials and then some directors will break things uh break the the mold and do two hour movies and stuff like this i really like the deadwood series very abruptly ended and the film meant a film meant to close it out years later was a dud oh that's too bad i heard dead was supposed to be really good and i think they said first example of organized crime in america oh in america yeah i guess it, would it be uh, no the cowboys came long after new york was established uh, actually during that time when new york was established when they first landed on the east coast there was no america it was still a colony and stuff like this so uh america I, maybe maybe whatever happened in days of 86 minute movies those were the days <laughs> yeah crack <laughs> they had to put in commercials in the what do you call it uh, for tv make room for them strawberry rhino i ate a tombstone pizza after craving my tombstones uh craving my tombstone while watching the tombstone stone fun the rain is picking up hard spiritual answers unfortunately most americans no longer have the attention span for that oh i think uh most people do i think that's why uh, tv series are such a huge hit right now because they're not one movie people are doing marathons on when they release like 13 episodes of a season they watch the whole thing because they have a longer attention span i think it's a fallacy that most people have a short attention span i think we are growing to have a longer attention span for what's really important in our lives maybe an amazing show or not right maybe an amazing show or not fun gang fun for me i think breakfast club surprised me the most because i wasn't expecting too much from it and i really enjoyed it tell that to millennials um yeah unfortunately some millennials uh some of the new generation have been uh cheated by corporations and our education system and i think it's up to us to try to provide something else for my generation anyway oh god yes bill paxton was killed indirectly by michael bain who were both killed by a terminator played by arnie <laughs> bill by the way bill paxton is a fantastic actor phenomenal actor the breakfast club was the best best movie of the group strawberry rhino i'm glad you liked 86 minutes long that's prime for short attention spans everything these days seems to be two hours plus yeah i personally like the two hours plus tell you the truth for me the best movie of the lot i don't know they were all so different they were all so different like forbidden planet it's absolute classic a must watch if you want science fiction and historical see historical place in movies right uh, el topo phenomenal groundbreaking movie tombstone great western phenomenal western movie and breakfast club 
a classic there were some amazing actors in tombstone for sure spiritual answers some good actors game over man strawberry rhino crack for me it's it's uh, about a concise well thought out story if you need three hours chance or you could use an editor and a rewrite or release it in two parts right crack sometimes i like the two hour plus don't get me wrong now some movies no they shouldn't be two hours right but for example crack lord of the rings is a nine hour movie right part one is three hours part two is three hours part three is three hours <laughs> the extended versions right and you needed that to tell that story some would say you needed longer for me tombstone elder god tombstone cool chicho remember bill paxton in streets of fire streets of fire what a great movie i love streets of fire i watched that recently well not recently i think like a couple of years ago i watched it again fantastic streets of fire and warriors streets of fires uh, warriors is better known streets of fire is a little bit more underground yeah that's epic for sure yeah streets of fire is phenomenal to be honest spiritual answer says if i never see a film with whole molly ringwald in it again i'm okay with that i liked her <laughs> see then don't watch 16 candles that's my next nomination i think streets of fire i'll vote for it elder god streets of fire streets of fire and and uh, what do you call it uh, uh, warriors would be fantastic to watch warriors is a great movie as well yeah that's the kicker right lord of rings movies were incredibly abbreviated so you could have taken you could have lord of rings could have been a 20 hour uh trilogy right i always laugh when i think of bill paxton as chet in weird science was it was he in weird science i can't remember there was one movie there's a couple of movie plays it's like they're dark it's like oh disagree molly is a timeless <laughs> hell is the, the strawberry <laughs> oh my god okay best actor award for all four movies goes to for me val kilmore without a no competition val kilmore and tombstone the the, Ch the chichonian award for best actor goes to val kilmore <laughs> that's my vote but Lord of the Rings is a pretty specific example though it is an epic tale for sure but not every story needs to be an epic tale agreed like for example Dune should be a five-hour movie strawberry rhino Val Kilmore best movie in the in the door movie oh yeah Val Kilmore in the doors uh, was fantastic Dune is going to be two parts nice I'm pumped me too nah val's best in real genius real i don't know real genius the tv miniseries of dune was great actually crack you've seen it i saw it too fantastic i really liked it i really liked it very shakespearean val kilmer can be my actor wingman anytime yeah. maybe during the time when he didn't do the marlon brando and like i don't know what happened to val kilmer I haven't seen him in anything for a while tv miniseries is pretty good uh, baby james mccoy Mo, McCoy, mcvoy yes his line i'm your huckleberry is wildly known and used yeah ice man that was in uh what was that movie called that was with al pacino heat i think wasn't it ice man crack did you see the rossi dune documentary uh, i've seen half of it man very unfortunate that they didn't sh well you know what i like the dune movie but i like to see his version of it as well that is on my list now cheryl real genius uh i've not thought about that in years i can't remember what movie that is drop too much as it maybe not enough so much fun it is so good cheryl Can I say something? I love him in The Saint. The Saint. Ah, funny. He was a thief in The Saint, wasn't he? 
kebabs chicho would you say you're more left-leaning i don't know I, I don't know i'm not bipolar so i can't say left or right i'm just i like seriously i have hundreds of hours of video out there pretty sure my beliefs are pretty much out in the open what i what i consider uh, our way of being should be i love the bastardized lynch version of dune as well chicho yeah crack <laughs> give it to david lynch <laughs> very very 80s perhaps not enough actually he needed some spice melange <laughs> absolutely absolutely cheryl says regarding uh spiritual answers it was a punk scene in the 80s and we could we would watch real genius when we were smashed uh, oh man i gotta someone linked this up in our discord under film i can't remember real genius what is this thing okay i gotta look this up man i got i already got my folders opened up we haven't had any glitches so hopefully we're not gonna have any glitches real genius oh man i know this movie <laughs> i didn't even realize it was him it is him oh my god that is too funny i gotta watch this again i gotta watch this again gang hilarious kebabs i don't hold any opinion when it comes to politics i'm a centralist can't be bothered for all the stress that comes with defending an opinion kebabs kebabs by the way politics and politics streams there was one dude in it who lived in a wall or something in real genius <laughs> God, watch this again i don't remember it at all i've seen it though the dude harkonnen spitting on the girl in the uh L lynch dune is the funniest and grossest part the harkon and he did good on when he pulls the plug of the heart of the of the slave and just ba bays in the dark blood it was just and just laughs and goes ah, floats up the saint was he an assassin am i uh, missing plots the same was uh, i think it was wasn't uh thief or something or am i six am i six or something like this oh shit it's movie club my bad yeah i kept up it's movie club elder god one more thing about the breakfast club there was supposed to be a movie based on the group meeting in the future but john hughes hated judd in the end so it was cancelled are you serious hilarious <laughs> funny funny judd he slipped through the cracks man the guy i don't think he made too much he made some stuff i guess crack there was so much that lynch nailed in that it's a shame it got taken away from him yeah you know what um uh, what do you mean taken away from him? like people there was a lot of hate for dune uh movie i don't know why I tell you the truth i saw it in the theater when it came out by the way and uh i loved it and then people would trash it i'm like what are you guys talking about uh -huh. that's hilarious strawberry says oh god he was a thief who worked for himself yeah that's what i thought saint was a thief a good classic sci-fi series is the prisoner yeah old school 1950s the prisoner isn't it wow totally misread that one judd and boondock saints too Ooh. boondock saints was fantastic boondock saints was amazing i think that might have been what happened with val kilmer i've heard he may have been uh incredibly difficult to work with oh really that's unfortunate he's a phenomenal actor or he was a phenomenal actor fun gang should we call the stream should we call the stream gang that was a nice little discussion nice discussion these movie things are uh, pretty sweet man pick four movies to watch that 
some of it we never seen, some of it we never watch again. And you rewatch in a new context, and you would go, "Wow, he was a perfectionist." Elder God says. Yeah, I don't know too much about him personally, but I know he was a phenomenal actor. That was a great chatter. One thanks. Yeah, you too, crack. Darius Stone. But if have you seen the Searchers? And if so, can you explain to me why it's not uh, boring? Because I reckon it is. I don't know the Searchers. Uh, like all the great actors of history. Okay, wait. Like all the yeah. Freshness without being. A, oh, hold on. Allow that crack. Auto mod zapped one of your things thanks everyone so much fun so much fun breakfast club no political <laughs> no political correctness no not at all can you be a perfectionist without being an asshole though i think possibly tombstone safe oh, okay cheers val Camo was probably last in a ricky jarvis comedy about a dwarf oh really and the other one i liked val kilmore in was uh, uh what was that science fiction one that didn't go anywhere uh, Willow, Willow. Do you guys remember Willow? That was a fun movie. I was very disappointed that they it was supposed to be a trilogy and they stopped. They didn't do any more. Sorry, I cursed. No worries, crack. Willow had Valkyrie. Yeah, Willow, Willow. Fun movie. It was a dwarf from Willow, Forbidden Planet. Very sexist. Very sexist. But 1950s gang. Gang, Willow. I forgot about that, Cheryl. <laughs> watch it again it was fun it was an epic it was good you, if you have kids it might enjoy it a lot oh you do have kids but other people if you have kids they'll enjoy it a lot el topo wtf all <laughs> the god says <laughs> gang thanks for being here if you want to know what all this is about i'm on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o strawberry rhino great minds think a lot willow is on disney plus <laughs> i'm on patreon if you want to follow this work you can follow the work through patreon if you want to support this work you can support this work through patreon and for those of you supporting this work through patreon thank you very much for your support okay we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in the chat twitch is where you want to be at and gang thank you for the follows thank you for the subs and if you want we got two more days of streaming left tomorrow morning we read a comic book okay western comic book with aliens in it jack kirby stan lee dick Ayres. can't go wrong right tomorrow morning from 10 a.m to 12 p.m we're reading a comic book and on monday we're picking four new movies to watch so if you want to do movie recommendations monday pop in and uh, we'll pick four more movies i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on lo minds vk parlor gap and twitter you can follow the work there and all the links will be in the description of this video dwarfism is what my corgi has wait wait one yeah <laughs> spiritual answers you have a good night chicho thanks for the conversation always appreciate it. i appreciate you guys as well man monday it is monday it is tombstone had no black actors didn't it i can't remember it was supposed to be western uh, place so and it was a brand new town so maybe that's the way it was i'm gonna go and gang and chicho enjoy your weekend you as well young, Pol young polacks come for the horse race if not for the movies ha <laughs> yeah come for the horse race if not for the movies cast your vote right wolf of wall street is uh dwarfist three inches long but <laughs> what gang the audio for this will be put on soundcloud soundcloud.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o as a podcast and the podcast the auto files should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including Spot spotify and itunes okay and this live stream will be uploaded to both bitshoot and youtube and you can support this work through bitshoot and youtube by subscribing by following by liking by turning on notifications and if you're on youtube you can join youtube membership with a button there gang thank you very much for being here mods thank you for taking care of business tell them i'm coming and hell's coming with me 
Yes, great line to the clown. Bill Paxton is Twister. Sweet dreams, gang, and good morning for those of you who are in the morning. Okay, and I'll see you guys in less than 12, ah, almost 12 hours. Bye, everyone.